so you don't fear being looked upon as an egotistical uh, Nazi leader of a rock band because sometimes you're pictured a little uh, in this way, like you decide what everybody else in the band does. Does it really work like this or it's just lack of ideas uh, on their of part? Those, most of the people that say that are not in bands. They don't know how a band works. So it's, it's, it's almost like, uh, you know, somebody uh, who's not an electrician telling an electrician how to fix a light, you know, or fix mm -hmm. a wiring, you know, it's, it's stupid. Um, your music has evolved uh, pretty uh, naturally and in an independent way from, let's say, uh, actual trends or styles, and your points of reference are definite f uh, from the past, probably. So is there anything that you really like, listen to, and might be eventually influenced by right now on the music market or the music business? No. Not at all. <laughs> And, and how about your work in the studio? Which bands did you produce, and are you planning on producing more bands? The only band I've produced is uh, King Holes. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but I will probably be producing some more bands this coming year. Uh, you've been misunderstood many times because of your personal beliefs and the way these beliefs are reflected in your lyrics. You have also been caricatured as a Satanist in a few metal <laughs> magazines. <Yeah. laughs> So I know it's pretty hard to sum up so, uh, one's personal beliefs, but would you give us an insight about that? Uh, what I can tell you in this short amount of time is uh, what makes, m what gets me through the day is using my inner strength from inside, being strong and then dealing with the world and things outside strong here first and then here. Although uh, in uh, a few interviews and reading your lyrics, I found very interesting another concept, if you want to comment on that, like the fact that positivity and negativity, like in a lot of Oriental philosophies as well, are complementary. You can have one again, uh, un unless you have the other, they have the same importance and you have to be able to deal and appreciate and use both sides of that. Would you like to comment on that? I think you did it very well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Has this being strong, being consistent yes. with one's beliefs uh, have anything to do with your martial training? We were talking about your Muay Thai and JKD. Yeah, uh, just always I had done, you know, the positive and the negative, and uh, without one there's not the other. They both have to exist, uh, but it became even more important once uh, doing martial arts. I've recently read um, a brief piece of news uh, regarding one of your lyrics that has not been included in the record about white power. And it was probably based on the misconception of being okay, converting to Islam is all right if you're black, if you're a rapper, and it's okay uh, if you're proud to be black in those conditions. Were you trying to do something similar on the whitey's point of view, or what else? Whitey's? <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, it seems to me as a double standard mm -hmm. that it is okay for black people or, or to unite or any other people to unite, but it's not okay if white people unite, which to me is hypocrisy. It should be okay for white people to unite, especially if they feel that they have you know, a problem that they need addressed and only if they unify can it be addressed. It also seems very hypocritical to me that uh, Minorities think that they're the only ones that have problems, and that if uh, because of white may be majority, that they don't have problems mm -hmm. just because they're the majority. This is super. This is like super ridiculous. Mm -hmm. It is everyone has problems. They're all poor people in all colors and walks of life. There are God so many poor people in America who are white, mm -hmm. and there's lots of rich black people, especially in the rap community. Rap is a very big business in America, many big, big companies. You know, uh, when, uh, when a very poor white family sees a rich, you know, rapper go by in a Mercedes Benz or whatever, he's just exactly like when a poor black person sees a rich white guy drive by. It's the same thing. So there is no, you know, you, know. you chose to live in a place that's probably uh, 
everything you talk about, everything you, criti you just criticized, uh, centered. I mean, LA is probably the epitome of uh, the failure of the American dreams for, for a few and the sign of victory of the American dreams for a few others. It's at least on this side of the ocean, we have this fake per perception of Los Angeles. Do you live there only for business reasons? Do you, yeah. only for those, would you rather move out somewhere? Soon I will be moving here. I don't like LA. Um, I don't like New York either. <laughs> I don't like a lot of places. Uh, but uh, also Europeans, uh, so I'll probably get in trouble here for saying it, but I've said it already. Europeans also have this feeling of uh, superiority that their governments are better than the United States. Their governments are just as corrupt. And the failure here is just as dramatic as in the US. Maybe you don't have the violence we have, but you still have the failure of government uh, helping the people. Definitely. Uh, looks like things are starting to happen finally for dancing in the States. I know MTV played uh, mother, I think, uh, pretty <laughs> constantly. Uh, is it they wouldn't play our, uh, the first video off this record. So was it too Colin radical? Call him back, yeah, but they said it was too safe. Uh, they <laughs> saw probably some s and in it as well. Uh, <laughs> that, I don't know if that bothered them too much. Uh, we're, the, we're looked upon by MTV with a different standard than other bands. So, for example, when Nine Inch Nails could get away with a lot more than Danzig could. And it's because of the stigma attached to the things I sing about, the way I sing about you know, who I am, and things like that. Uh, we're just about to see Can't Speak. Would you like to comment on that song? What is it about? Uh, that's a song about uh, all the different oppressions that one feels every day from government, uh, local authority, uh, media, you know, uh, all different kinds of groups, you know, uh, you know, always telling you you got to be this. Everyone has to be the same. They want everyone to, you know, think the same, be the same, think the same. Politics. It's, it's just it's with my reaction. Okay. Questo che in speak torneremo dopo il break pubblicitario con Cathedral, PJ Harvey e Susie and the Banshees. Che possiamo definire sinfonica, che si chiamava Black Area. Chiediamo di sentenziare di dare un seguito a questo tipo di lavoro. Is Black Area going to have a follow up of any sort? Uh, yeah, eventually. I started working on a soundtrack for uh, Frank Rosetta's Death Dealer. Mm -hmm. It's very, uh, like I said, militaristic before, but the, it's very like old war drums and then that, that kind of music over it. I know it takes a long time to work on soundtracks, usually. Do you find time to, to, to do this? You also did something with Roy Orbison, if I'm not mistaken, for Less Than Zero? Yeah, I wrote Roy Orbison a song. Since there, uh, was that 87? Probably. Yeah. yeah. And recently, I just wrote Johnny Cash's song, which was a lot of a great honor for me because I'm a very big fan of Johnny Cash. So. Uh, do you listen to symphonic music as well? It was, it was, or was it just, um, I don't know, inspiration coming from years of rock and roll? Wanted to go into the studio without guitars for no, a change? I listen to, uh, you know, Wagner. Saint Saiyans and a few other, you know, a few other composers. Before we let you go, how do you see the supposed to be happening punk rock resurgence in the States? Every time we hear about that, two or three bands are mentioned and that's it. Plus, I don't feel there's a lot of punk, at least attitude, in what's being sold to us as punk. No. How, how, do, you, how do you feel about all this? I think it's uh, punk pop. <laughs> You know, it doesn't have the attitude, at least for me. It's just not, you know, if I give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down, I don't like it. It's kind of like uh, now in 1995, 1994, it seems like record companies have found a way to market punk music. You know, it's like punk pop, though. It's not really angry. It's uh, very soft, you know? You know, soft? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Not dangerous at all. No, no. <laughs> Ok, con questo è tutto per questa puntata. Thanks a lot for staying with us. It was a pleasure having you on our show. Grazie Glenn Danzig. Grazie alla Veg di Milano per averci ospitato. Noi ci vediamo tra una settimana esatta per un'altra ora di musica alternativa.